so now what we want to do is we want to say how do I relate that geographic coordinate system that we just figured out to where I am how do I how do I make that um, work so I can actually know where I am and and go to different places so um, the first tool that we're going to learn how to use uh, is a compass eventually we'll move on to GPS and GIS but we're going to start with the compass now the way a compass works I kind of left this whole um, U.S. Geological Survey um, explanation because I think it's actually pretty good. So the needle of a compass is a small magnet that can pivot in the horizontal plane. The needle experiences a torque from the ambient magnetic field of the Earth. The reaction to this torque is the needle's preferred alignment with the horizontal component of the geomagnetic field. The north end of the, comp of the compass needle is simply the north end of the magnet. It is the end of the compass needle that points to the north magnetic pole in the general direction of the geographic north pole. The south end of the compass needle is the south end of the magnet points to the south magnetic pole in the general direction of the geographic south pole. So what does that mean for us? Well, um, we're going to use the sexagesimal system, which just it's a fancy way for saying um, what we learned in geometry. The circle has 360 degrees. So we have this little magnet inside of our compass, and it's going to point, um, the north end's going to point to the magnetic north pole, the south end's going to point to the magnetic south pole. So we're going to take a circle, take our 360 degrees, and divide it up, because we know if we use angles, angles are really good for direction. And that's what we're going to try and uh, do with the compass, is we want to walk a specific direction. So we're going to take that 360 degrees, which are used for Latin long and UTMs. We're going to break the, the degrees down into minutes and seconds, and those are going to give us coordinates. So we'll have our, our coordinates that we can use in our compass. So um, there's, uh, we can do uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, or we can also do uh, decimal degrees. So let me just back it up right here if we're trying to get really accurate on our compass we're not going to be able to to get this accurate but um, it's good to still know how to do this so uh, if you have degrees minutes seconds everything's um, divided up by 60 so there's um, 60 uh, 60 uh, minutes in a degree and there's whoops sorry about that 60 minutes in a degree and there's 3600 seconds or 60 60 minutes and 60 seconds of each minute um, within a degree. And so what we can do is we can divide those up and we can go from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. Sometimes you might get coordinates in either, so you want to get comfortable um, going back and forth between both um, if you're trying to use it to find somewhere. And then we can reverse the process by taking our decimal degrees and doing um, degrees dividing our minutes by 60 and our seconds by 3600. And so if you take 45 degrees, 12 minutes, 36 seconds to decimal degrees, using this formula, you get 45.21 degrees. So how do I go from point A to point B? That's really what we want to know. So uh, the first thing that we're going to focus on is azimuths. And I think I'm I'm a person who prefers azimuths because it makes more sense to me and I think it's simpler. Um, it's measured from north, which is 0 degrees or 360, and it's just a circle. And so if we look at it, um, as this diagram does great, we're looking at this circle. And so if we have an azimuth of 80 degrees, we want it's basically going to be an angle from north. It's going to be 80 degrees from north. And so if this was us, um, our needle, if our needle pointed north, that would be the direction um, or the azimuth 80 degrees. Now, um, that's it's the it's just this angle off of north, and it's always measured clockwise. Uh, one thing that's interesting, just at least to me in this picture, is that the shadow right here is on the north side. This actually lets you know that this person is standing in the northern hemisphere. And the reason you know that is because the sun appears in the east and disappears on the horizon in the west and travels along a southerly axis when in the northern hemisphere. So for his shadow 
to be on this side, it means it's because the sun is over here on the south side, which means it's a, this person is standing in the northern hemisphere. So, just thinking about an azimuth and kind of trying to figure it out. Here is north, here is south. If we're trying to go from, um, trying to go to uh, this at 45 azimuth, it's just the angle, horizontal angle from north, 45, and we would go that direction. So, a back azimuth or a back sight. So, if my azimuth is 112, and that would be this angle right here. So I'd be heading off in that direction. A back azimuth is just either adding or subtracting 180 degrees, or just thinking about the idea of turning around from the direction I'm going. So if I'm going this direction, which is a 112, 112 degree azimuth, then that direction is going to be plus 180 degrees. And 112 plus 180 gets me 292 degrees. So if I'm going 112 degrees this way to go back the same direction I came from, that would be a 292 degree azimuth or adding 180 degrees to it. Now, when would I subtract 180 degrees? Well, if I had 292, I know I can't go past 360 degrees, so I'm not going to add 180 degrees to 292, I would then subtract 180 degrees from 292. So if I went a 292 degree azimuth, I would subtract 180 degrees, so I would have a back azimuth of 112. Now bearings. Bearings are other um, directional unit. So um, a bearing is the direction or position of something or the direction of movement related to a fixed point. It's typically measured in degrees, usually with magnetic north as zero. Now, um, the key thing to remember with a bearing is that there's three parts to it. Um, there's the um, beginning direction, so bearings can be measured from either north or south. And then um, they're only going to go a maximum of 90 degrees, and they're either going to go east or west. So you're going to need three things. You're going to need north or south to begin with. You're going to need an angle from 0 to 90, and then you're going to need east or west, the direction you decided to go from north or south. So no angle is going to be greater than 90 in a bearing, and you can go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise when you're using bearings. So when we look here on this, uh, on this graphic here, A, if we were doing an azimuth, we would just say it's a 60 degree azimuth. But if this is in bearings, this is north, because we're going to base our angle off of north. So it's north, 60 degrees, and we went to the east. So north, 60 degrees east. This angle here in B is taken off of south. So if this were a bearing, this would be south, 45 degrees east. Now... If we were looking at this same line as an azimuth, we would measure this angle here, which we would know because this is 90 and that's 45. So that angle there would be 135. So this is actually, if this is an azimuth, this would be 135 degree azimuth. But because it's a uh, bearing, we would say south 45 degrees east because bearings only use the quadrants. This is south 55 degrees west. This is north 30 degrees west. So, our format, beginning point, north or south, to tell us which quadrant we're going to be, um, we're going to, or which half we're going to start in, and then our angle, 0 to 90, and then our direction, east or west, which tells us which quadrant we are then going to be in. So north or south, angle 0 to 90, and then east or west. Now, um, the one thing that's great about um, back bearings with, um, with a bearing is that you just have to reverse your um, direction. So if we have north 30 west as our bearing, 
our back bearing is simply south 30 east. So just take your north, make it south, take your west, make it east, and that would give you your back bearing. Same angle, different um, directions. So just to give you a good comparison side by side to just get you kind of comfortable with that difference between azimuths and bearings. Remember azimuths, you're just going to go clockwise from 0 to 360 degrees. Bearings, you're going to pick, you're going to work in quadrants. So northeast quadrant, southeast quadrant, southwest quadrant, northwest quadrant. And then your bearing will always have three parts, north or south, an angle 0 to 90 degrees, and then east or west, whichever quadrant you're in. Um, if, if to get comfortable with it, I'm pretty comfortable with converting azimuths to bearings, but um, for a lot of you, this will probably be the first time that you're doing it. So there's this little chart right here that kind of gives you the idea. So if it's an uh, azimuth of 0 to 90, there is no conversion to a bearing. We just have to add on our um, north at the beginning and our east at the end. Um, if it's a 90 to 180, it's going to be 180 degrees minus your azimuth. If it's a 180 to 270, it's going to be your azimuth minus 180 degrees. And if it's 270 to 360, it's 360 minus your azimuth to give you your bearing. And then there's some examples provided below here. So if a compass, a compass tells us where we are, that's great. But are there things that can cause problems with it? There are a couple. So let's kind of talk about them. The first thing that you really want to understand is magnetic declination. So the idea that our compass um, is a little magnet and that it works off all uh, off the magnetic field surrounding the Earth. So one thing that we really have to understand then is that magnetic field surrounding the Earth and what that actually means. And so um, magnetic north and true north are, are different. They're not in the same place because the magnetic field is constantly shifting. And so um, one thing that we really want to understand is the Igonic line or where we have zero declination. So on your compass, and the videos will talk about this, um, you will adjust for declination. And basically all you're saying when you adjust for declination is are you um, west of this line or are you east of this line? Now what's um, complicated is you really have to understand, um, understand what you're saying. So we are trying to adjust back to the Igonic line. So if I am west of the Igonic line, my... Um, my declination is going to be east because I'm adjusting back east to the line. If I am east of the line, my, um, my declination is going to be west because I'm adjusting back west to the line. Now, this is a map for 2010. So for 2020, um, that line will have adjusted um, and looked differently. So just uh, Google magnetic declination. Uh, 2020 and you should find a map um, similar to this that shows you where the Igonic line is and where the um, different adjustments are. So uh, I've actually provided that link right there so I would check that out um, but just giving you this idea um, the changes over time they're not constant but they're about four or five minutes per year remember degrees minutes seconds so it's about four or five minutes per year and um, if we're going for a definition of declination it's the angular difference between the magnetic meridian and true meridian or the difference between magnetic north and true north. The agonic line that's the zero declination if you're west of the line your declination is east if you're east of the line your declination is adjusting back west. And so here's just a look at the different magnetic fields and the declinations attached to them right now. So if you were over here in uh, this part of uh, Brazil, you would have um, you'd uh, your uh, 20 is your adjustment. So you would look right here and you'd have to adjust back 
20 degrees, I believe, 20 degrees back east, right? So you would have a west. Your declination is 20 degrees west because you're east of the line. So magnetic declination, your angular difference between magnetic north and true geographic north. So if you want to travel on a 45 degree bearing, a true bearing, so for this place where we're doing this example, your magnetic de declination is negative 5 degrees or 5 degrees west. So you're actually going 40 degrees on a magnetic bearing. So how do you, so how do you fig, how do you adjust that? Well, if you correct your declination, you'd actually be going 50, but it will correct back and say 45, which is what you wanted in the first place because it's that you set it for five degrees higher to adjust for that negative five degrees. And so it's, it's it seems complicated, but it's really not as long as you adjust your compass before you start for the declination of the area. And you've got to remember when you're using the compass that if you travel to a different area, you've got to look up that declination and make sure that in this new area, it either has the same declination you've been using, or if it's different, that you adjust your compass before you start. Otherwise, you could end up somewhere completely different than you want to get to. Another problem we can have um, with compasses is something called local attraction. So you want to avoid local magnetic attractions, uh, things like wire fences, overhead cables, iron deposits. Um, non-dampened compasses or compasses that don't have um, water in them, the, the magnetic needles um, in enclosed in water, those ones are going to be really affected by local attraction, but your uh, dampened compasses can be affected um, by this as well. Um, also, if you have um, some sort of magnetation from the Earth's crust, so like if you're near igneous, large igneous or volcanic rock deposits, like if you're working in Hawaii, you could also have um, real problems with local attraction. So um, you want to, if you, if something goes wrong, and um, I've had this happen before where you just go to one area and all of a sudden it's different from the uh, point you were before, you can go back to your point or you can look at your back bearing. If your forebearing and your back bearing don't match, you would have a local attraction. And so you really just kind of want to back away and get as close as you can and kind of figure out how to adjust around that um, area or be able to um, work through it. It's just something that you have to just understand and then be able to do your best to problem solve and figure out how you can get around that issue. So what kind of things would you be looking for out in the field? I mean, obviously, there's ones that come to mind like, oh, if I'm going to my next plot or if I'm going to this stand or I'm going to this property, but what else could you be looking for? Um, one thing that you might be out um, looking for and be sent to find is survey points. Survey points are part of the National Geodetic System. They're established by the U.S. government for um, large-scale mapping. So the idea of saying like this is here. So what the what the government did is they sent out a bunch of surveyors they created the National Geodetic System and they marked specific points to say this is this point. It's got this specific coordinate and that way we can establish that this point is always there. They established um, positions on thousands of these monument points and um, this, this whole system is set up to help improve our horizontal accuracy. And as you change the datums and as you make adjustments, um, we'll... Um, because these points are where they are like you know if there's let's just say there's a point um and it's uh in the middle of yellowstone national park the middle of yellowstone national park's not going to move the middle of yellowstone national park is the middle of Ye yellowstone national park but when we make our adjustments now we can look at our datum and see what the mathematical model says and it, if it says okay well here i'm going to put this into my gps or i'm going to put in this compass direction and I'm going to follow it, does it take me to that control point? And if it doesn't, then we know what adjustments we need to make in order to make sure that the models and um, the data that we're being provided is as accurate as possible. And so the last thing that I'll leave you with in terms of coordinate systems 
is just this little far side cartoon where it says, yes, yes, I know that, Sydney. Everybody knows that. But look, four wrongs squared minus two wrongs to the fourth power divided by this formula do make a right. And the reason I just threw that in there is because um, sometimes when you're doing um, working with maps or you're working with coordinates, sometimes it's going to seem confusing. Sometimes it's not going to make sense. Sometimes it's going to seem like you're totally doing it wrong, but then you actually get it right. And um, part of that is it's just not being familiar with um, the system and with how it works. But if you give it time, if you practice it, if you, um, you know, really look at, at how you can get better at it, you know, using a compass over and over again, um, using the maps, looking at all the different coordinate systems and really trying to figure out how to use them, it will all start making sense and it will all start um, getting easier and you'll, and you'll start, you'll stop having wrongs and you'll start having a lot more rights. Um, and to go with that, I've put this slide right here. I've given you some practice. You can convert uh, two decimal degrees, convert to degrees and seconds, convert uh, azimuths to bearings, convert bearings to azimuths. And I'm not going to flip to the next slide. Um, you can do that on the um, on the lecture um, notes, but um, that's where you can get the answers. So um, hopefully you get all the right answers. And if you have any questions, you can always um, message me. Hope you liked it.